Why does the black man serve the white man? Why does everything the black man do benefit the white man? Why does the black man say freedom is doing what I want to do? And why is it that everything he wants to do enriches the European? Welcome to the desert of the real. Peace, family. This is your brother, Mr. Holipsism, uh, making this on a Sunday, November 12th. Um, haven't done like a video like this in a while. So I want to do something first off the bat that I haven't done. Um, my, as you all know, if you don't know, my Holipsism's Haven YouTube channel has been demonetized for quite some time. Because on principle, I don't believe you should get paid off of um, anything related to socioeconomic and political um, cultural content. You know, like anything about the struggle, so to speak, I don't believe you should get paid off of it. That's just me as a principle. So, but YouTube, which has become more corporate over the time since I joined it, um, with Google has made it so that even if you are a subscriber you still don't get notified when I upload a video so I guess a combination of me demonetizing my videos kind of puts me down in the rankings and algorithms me out and then on top of that where they don't notify your subscribers because that's the reason why they subscribe to you so they can be notified they've made an extra step where now you have to click on a little bell and actually ask to be notified when your person that you're subscribed to uploads a video. It's like an extra step that they put in because, you know, it's all about control. And if people don't fight to um, keep control of YouTube, YouTube is going to go the way of the dinosaur. It's just, I'm just waiting for another format to rise and take it out. Because that's what's going to happen. It used to be a place where you can express yourself. It used to be a place where you knew what the top videos were. The top videos, it wasn't no ambiguity. Whatever video was watched and viewed the most was the number one video. But what happened was a lot of videos, the, the mainstream um, establishment, corporate people didn't want you to see were in the top three videos. You know, like a lot of 9-11 conspiracy and, and stuff like that. So then they made it so that now you don't know what the top video is. Just based on views. That's the way it should be, right? But anyway, um, I wanted to talk about something that, well, yeah, let me just finish that. Subscribe, in other words. I mean, click the little bell on my channel so you can be notified when I upload a video. Because if not, you're not going to know when I upload a video. And basically, I'm telling you that because there's been a lot of people that's telling me, hey, how come I don't get you know, notified when you upload? And I'm like, YouTube. So just do that, and then you'll, you'll be able to get my videos. This isn't going to be too long, um, but I wanted to address my, you know, like a particular strand of my detractors. It's the people that want nationhood without the nation. Now, what do I mean by that? See, it's certain people that I, I don't agree with, but I can at least respect because they have an ideologically consistent position. Um, oh, Mr. Solutions, that's the dude. Thank you. Kala, that's the guy I was trying to um, remember his name. Mr. Solutions calls in the Collar's show a lot. And Mr. Solutions is a what I call a rugged individual. He's into rugged individualism. Mr. Solutions is not concerned about anything involving the collective. It's all about you as the individual and how you can pull yourself up by your bootstraps and how you can thrive in any situation just based on you just basically looking out for yourself. Now... I'm not going to say that there's not some truth to that. There is truth to that. Like if you have a position in life that you don't care about nobody but yourself and you're only concerned about 
you and you're not concerned about the children, the future, your people, the collective or any of that. Yeah, you can have a very successful um, um, life here in America because America is made for that. You know what I'm saying? Like your, your philosophy fits well with the American dynamic. I can respect that even though I don't agree with it. I can respect it because you don't you don't double talk. You're not talking about collective issues and then preaching individualism at the same time. See, the people I got a problem with are people like I don't want to say no names, but people who preach nationalism but don't want a nation. And what do I mean by that? People are constantly talking about what black folks, plural folks, what we need to do. Talking about us as a people saying our when they use we, us and our. Then what you're talking about is a nation. If you're not talking about a nation, then stop using we stop using us and stop using our. I'll give you an example. I was listening to a show just recently. Uh, my boy, Chef Rob. And he had a call on his show and the caller was talking about, oh, see, the problem with black folks is black folks don't get into the medical field. We need to have more doctors. We need to have more surgeons, blah, 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 blah. And so I'm listening to this. But I know that this person, because I've heard him before, is not for nationhood. So I chimed in. I'm like, you know, it's, I just find it interesting that you want to use nationalistic rhetoric but then you don't want the nation like so you want surgeons and doctors with no hospitals so you don't want to have hospitals which you would have if you had a nation but you want doctors it's, it's backwards it's double talking it's like you're using nationalist rhetoric but you don't believe in nationhood so how do you expect black people to behave as a um, organized group when you don't believe in organization. Because that's all nationhood is. It's organizing the collective. So if you don't believe that the collective should be organized and umbrellaed under uh, 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 any type of structure, which is what nationhood and a nation would provide, then why are you talking about what black folks need to do collectively? It makes no sense. You're double talking. It's just like when I had the guy on the show and he's talking about, I'm, I'm bringing up that you can't really control your environment unless you control the land. You got to control the context that you live in. And, ah, you, you nationalists, you talking all this stuff and da, da, da. We got towns right here in America. And I said, so, whoa, whoa. So what you're saying is we shouldn't have control of the land because we got control of the land in America. I said, you're double talking. On one hand, you're attacking me because I'm saying we need to control the context. And then you're bragging about how we do control the context, even though we don't control the context. There's no black towns where we control the infrastructure of nothing. It's a bunch of bullshit. And anybody that knows about nationhood, infrastructure and development and all of that knows that it's BS. Show me a town in America where black folks control the water supply. And then come talk to me. Do you control the water supply in Flint, Michigan? Whose fault is it that Flint still got lead in the water? Is it yours because you, you're not doing your job or you don't control it? So the bottom line is stop using nationalist rhetoric if you don't believe in nationhood. Be like Mr. Solutions. Be an individualist. Because that's what we are in America. We're just a group of individualists scattered, you know, amongst, you know, we're just a group of scattered individualists, I should say. And we're just aligned by aesthetic similarities. We all look the same. But on a socioeconomic and political level, we does not exist. Nationhood would provide the we. Nationhood would provide the us. Nationhood would provide the our. We still haven't got the brain power enough to develop a national a national fund with transparency and accountability and liability 
where people can funnel their resources to and we can allocate those resources in an open, transparent environment. That's a no brainer. And if we've been around since what? In this country. And I'm, I don't think I am not one of these people to think that I am just so fucking brilliant that I came up with this idea myself and nobody else has thought of it. Come on. Impossible. What it is is that people don't want it. And people want to sit here and play the um, misery game and continue to complain and bitch and moan with no desire to get out of their current situation. That's what it is. And I'm personally happy that we got niggas as Indians. I'm perfectly happy that we got people that's Captain America Negroes, militant integrationists, um, Black Power Americans, Facebook Indians, indigenous Instagrammers. You know, I'm so happy that we have them because that's the less amount of people in the way for what we have to do in terms of developing our nation state. So that's all I really want to say. I just wanted to get that out of the way. Stop using nationalist rhetoric. Stop talking about what we as a collective need to do, how us and our and all of these pluralistic terms that you use when you're not really about nationhood. You're not really about organization. You're not really about developing and turning that we, us and our into something tangible and concrete. And on that note, I'll holler at you good people later. Peace. They wanted and war they got, but they put the inner heat where my own got hot when I